Hi, Jonathan Pickup. Welcome to my YouTube movie. If you're not already a subscriber, click on the button to become a subscriber. It really helps. And if you want to be notified, don't forget to click on the bell. In this movie, I wanted to talk about the Move by Points tool. It's on your basic tool set. That's this one here. The Move by Points tool has several options. Here they are here. Now in Vectorworks 2021, they got rid of one of the preference buttons, so you no longer see the preference. And they've replaced it with these modes here. This is for moving objects. This is for duplicating. This one here will duplicate, but it allows you to automatically distribute the, the objects. And this one allows you to move stuff reference to something. This one's for retaining the original objects. And this one is remember to look after or keep selected the original object. Otherwise, it turns it off. So I wanted to show you a couple of tricks that I use with this tool because I use it a lot. And one of the things I've done is I've reset my hotkey. Now this is my own personal workspace. It's not the one that you've got. And now you'll, you'll notice that I've got a new keyboard shortcut, which is Shift plus the Z or the Z key. And if you look on your keyboard, you'll notice they're next to each other because I'm too lazy to move my fingers too far apart. So I use that a lot. That's my keyboard shortcut. You see it brings it up straight away. And the first one here is move. Now this option here will only move. It will not duplicate. You need to have an object selected, but if you want to, you can hold the Alt key on a Windows machine or the Command key on a Macintosh. And I've now selected an object. It's a temporary, temporary thing. It just hides that tool temporarily. And when you let go of that key, it brings it all back again. So I want to make a duplicate, duplicate that with just one. And I want to move it from this corner down to that corner. And so I've got a copy there. Mostly when I'm using the, the move by points tool, it's in this mode here. So let's make sure we've got something selected. So I'm using it in that first mode. Click, come down to here. I can still hold down the Option key, and it will duplicate. So holding down the Option key or the Alt key will turn it from that mode to the second one without losing the first mode. So you can see I've got two objects there now. Those are my two joists. The bearers are underneath. I'm going to hold down the Command key again, or the Alt key, and the Shift key, and I'll select the other one as well. Now this time I'm going to copy these from the bottom corner. So use the Z or the Z key to zoom in from that bottom corner down to here. Don't forget I'm going to hold down the Option or the Command key on a Windows machine, and that'll make a copy. So now I've got two copies. I only want one of these selected, and I need to have these every 600 millimeters. So I'm going to go back to my Move by Points tool. This time I will duplicate. I don't know how many I need as part of my problem. So I could use this one. I could just do one at a time. I'm going to do a, a few of these. So let's make it four. Let's get started. It doesn't matter where I start this from, but I will zoom in and do it from the center. And I want to come down 600 millimeters or 24 inches into once. You notice that I'm coming down. And also, you might notice that I've actually touched the very edge here. So it's lining up. Enter again, and now it's created all of my objects. I'm going to do it in the other mode as well to show you what we might want to do. So let's say, for example, we want this evenly spaced all the way down there. So back to my Move by Points tool. I'm going to use this next mode here, which is evenly spaced or distribute mode. So start from here again, zoom in from that corner down to this corner here. So I'm using the Z key again. And so now it's decided how many I want for them, evenly spaced them down that distance. Now I have ended up with an extra one, this one down the end here. This one is to retain the original object. If I don't tick that option, I will lose the original object. Let me show you. Let's turn that off. We'll do that again from this one here. So from this corner here, the Z key, Z key, click there, come down to here, Z key again, click there, and you'll notice I've lost my first object here because I didn't have the object retention turned on. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate these. I'm going to do my offset 600 millimeters. So it actually doesn't matter where I start. Click there, come down 600, and make sure I'm coming down vertically, click. 
and you'll notice that it's uh, kept the original object that's it there and it's left it selected so if I wanted to group them it's a great opportunity to group them just using your keyboard shortcut control G or command G and again I need to get rid of that bottom one and you might be wondering why I've got them evenly spaced up to this point and they're not and that's because the my sheet supply would come in a certain size and these are spaced so that they fit sheet of plywood okay so that's the move by points tool now the other one I wanted to show you was this one here which is the reference point mode so I'm going to hide all my foundations because I don't need to see them and I'm just going to turn my frame back on so there we are now my doors and windows need to be a specific distance from the ends let's have a look down here now I'm using a specific construction system and the distance I need is this one down here so I'm just going to hit the G key and go up to there and it's 635 millimeters it's a strange number but it suits my cladding system when I click on this window I've got my set position button this one here Now, when I choose the set position button I can click where I want to measure from I can click on my window and I can say that the first reference is my reference point so that's where I'm measuring from 635 millimeters okay and it moves my door back to the right location so that's a really handy way to do it sometimes I use that not when I'm dealing with doors and windows sometimes I deal with it where I'm trying to deal with things um, and the other thing is that that move by points let's just move that down again I don't even have to be on that wall when I use it so let's go back to this I'm gonna click here come down to here click and 635 and it'll move that door that door or window back to where it belongs now I have used this sometimes where I'm just trying to line things up for example I might have an object over here and this object wants to be a specific distance from this object I'll go back to here and I will use that again so I'll click there and I'll click there and I want that to be 24 inches and it'll just move it closer so that can be a quite a handy one just so that you can move stuff to exactly the right position do these work in 3d really well they really do work well in 3d so let's say for example I draw on the face of this object let's draw on automatic screen plane so let's draw a rectangle here I can use my move by points tool and I can click at the top of that wall I can click on that corner of the rectangle and I can say that I only want that to be eight inches down 200 millimeters and it'll actually move my rectangle up the wall you can also use move by points this one in 3d this one in 3d you can use them all so it's a really powerful tool the, the move by points tool I use it a lot the standard keyboard shortcut is different from my one so let me go to the fundamentals keyboard this is the standard Vectorworks fundamentals workspace and here's my tool here which has got the shift plus M key which I find too far away from my keyboard so I've got to stretch my fingers too far which is why I've changed it to the one that I use which is uh, shift plus Z because they're next to each other 